can be hard when you grow up People feel you with doubt You start thinking about what you're gonna do now And it's do or die Gotta make it count So lose your worries Let your problems go on Until my whole body burns out I ain't never gonna slow down Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about personal development and getting yourself into the mindset that you need to take action today. It is easy to say, I'm going to do it later. Probably the easiest thing you can do. I might say, hey, you want to clean your room today? Well, yeah, I'll do it later, right? You know, my kids, and it's like they don't want to clean the room. Hey, you want to mow the lawn today? Yeah, you know, I'll do it later. But what does later truly mean, right? We can go down this rabbit hole of what later means, but later is just an opportunity to not take action. So that means if we are going to do things later, guess what? Later is not promised. No one says tomorrow's promise. Yeah, everyone lives like tomorrow's promise. Everyone lives like they have another moment. And I hope you have another moment, you know, like I want you to have more moments in your life to change but it's not guaranteed. And sometimes we run out of moments. Before we even know it, we run out of moments. Life can move so very quickly. Just, you know, the other day, you can think about when you're running around as a kid, thinking about when you wanted to be an adult, when you wanted to drive. And then now you're in a, you know, a teenager and you're like, all right, I want to get like a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I want to have a big house and I want to do this. I want to go to this place and travel the world. And then you, maybe you start working and now you want to make this much money. And you, we always give ourselves these different goals and aspirations. Yet sometimes those goals and those aspirations are not necessarily tied to our best self or our best version of being. Because we might be a six, seven figure earning person, but yet we might need to take pain meds just to get to work because we are, you know, like our back hurts or our legs hurt or whatever it be, because we have been neglecting ourselves. And in a way, we have to bring some attention to what we're doing each and every day. And when we get into the world of personal development, we look at how we can develop ourselves to be a better version of itself currently. So think of it as like you have a phone, right? It could be iPhone, it could be Android, whichever team you're on, doesn't matter. But let's say you have the old version of your device. So an iPhone, you know, 11 or whatever, I think that's old enough. Or you have like a Samsung Galaxy Note 9 or something, right? So that's pretty old. You can see that right now they're on like 15, maybe 16 for iPhones. Guess what? Now you are faced with this opportunity of looking at your phone. Oh, this is old. This is dirty. This is dingy. This is outdated. But then you see something new and something shiny. In a sense, that old version of the phone is you. It's your mindset. It's who you are every single day. It's the mindset that says, I'll do it later. It's the mindset that starts and stops, right? That mindset is not going to give you much or it's not going to give you the latest and the greatest. So today is going to be a conversation of how we can get to the latest and the greatest mindset, not so much of devices. Of course, you can go out and buy a new iPhone or Android device. That is perfectly fine. But today is going to be an opportunity for us to understand exactly how we can develop to that new version that we so desperately want and desire. But we have to bring more attention to it. So today we're going to be doing that with my guest, Jerry Scarlato, and he's going to be helping us understand his work as a personal development coach and how he helps people see that there's going to be opportunity in everything you have done and everything you will do. Welcome, Jerry Scarlato, to Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? I'm well, Michael. Good to have you, brother. Sorry, I just got done recording my own podcast, and here I am trying to take over. <laughs> no, it's good to be here, brother. Glad to have you. It is a work of art to have a podcast because it is a labor of love, they say. It is your own personal take of mindset, what you bring to the world. And today we're going to be talking about your work as a personal development coach. You come from a long history of fitness and helping people just better themselves. I'm interested to 
learn more about what you do, your mindset, and we can even get into some of your podcasts in a bit. But in your own words, can you tell the world who you are, what you do, and how you help? So currently what I do is I'm a personal development coach. I literally shifted into this over the last couple of months. I owned a fitness studio before that for 10 years. And there came a time last year where it felt like something was off. I went out of town. I went to Florida for a week and walked up and down the beach. And all I did during that time was think, what is this feeling that I have? What do I have going on in my brain about the business? And for the first time ever, I had this thought and it was closed the studio. And when that thought went through my head, I relaxed. My mind relaxed, my body relaxed. Now, as an entrepreneur, you have that thought go through your head a lot. When you're in business, it's like sometimes things are going nuts and you're like, I just want to close the business. But it's not a real thought, right? It's just like a in the moment, losing your mind kind of feeling. But this was the first time where I had the thought and it literally was a relaxing thought. My body, my mind, like everything was just calm. When I got back, closed it. It took a couple months, but slowly closed it down and thought about what I wanted to do next. I knew that I wanted to stay in the service space, helping others. And I was trying to decide how to shift it and move in another direction. And as I was doing that, I'm doing stuff online and I'm putting out some videos and it felt right. And I'm like, well, I could go down this route. Then I start to just basically shift my attention to all online, which is a completely different, not completely, but is a much different aspect than brick and mortar. Because in brick and mortar, you have a very small group of people that, well, depending on the size of the city, the city that the business was in is 12,000 people. So it's a small town. So it's a small group of people to talk to. Online, as you well know, you have millions, hundreds of millions of people that you're talking to. And I'm literally starting at the bottom rung of all of that and slowly trying to work my way up, right? You know, it was an interesting shift to start to make, but I wanted to expand my ability to help people. Health and fitness and personal development, I guess, for that matter, are both watered down in a sense is that there's a lot of both of those out there. But health and fitness, I think, scares people more than the idea of just personal development. So it's almost... I don't want to say an easier way to get to a person and to help them change. But at the same time, the most important thing in both of those categories, health and fitness and in personal development is your mind. In order to develop a person, you need a holistic approach. The just focusing on exercise doesn't cut it. However, exercise can be a huge catalyst to help you develop your mind, but you have to be able to develop this at the same time. So what I'm shifting my specialization to, if you will, is to help people develop their mind, but also at the same time, help them develop their body and help them develop their soul and help them develop everything that it takes to be a better human being. Instead of just, hey, eat this and hey, exercise this way, take those things and stack them on top of or maybe underneath of, depending on how you look at it, building a sustainable mindset to keep you going and actually helping you develop into a different person instead of stopping and starting and stopping and starting. Long-winded way of saying, started in brick and mortar, and now I built a wall between brick and mortar and online and shifted myself to online. Yeah, it's the journey of being an entrepreneur. And when you start, sometimes you just don't know exactly what you want. You have an inkling and you're like, okay, I have this inkling. I like to do it. I have a passion for it. I'm good at it. My friends are telling me I'm good at it. And you start something and maybe three, four, five years down the road, you're like, you know what? Maybe this is not for me. Like one of the reasons why 50% of businesses fail within the first five years it's because they just don't want to do it anymore. It's not even because they didn't succeed being an entrepreneur. It's just that they say, you know what, I'm looking at my future now, and this is not necessarily what I want. And, you know, like it's that epiphany moment where you get to decide if you want to be an entrepreneur, or if you just want to work for a paycheck. And there's nothing wrong with being either or. Like I know people who are perfectly content having a paycheck, going into work at nine to five, and they're more than happy enough. They have everything they need. That's the lifestyle they chose. And then you have people who want to be entrepreneurs. They're, you know, go-getters. They are burning the midnight oil, burning out, whatever. They love it, right? They love that feeling, but it's not for everybody. You do have to figure out what do you want. And I like to see it as aesthetics. For example, when I work with people, especially when they're trying to get into health and fitness or just overall wellness, I say, what does that look like for you, right? Like, what does being well look like for you? Some people might say, well, let's do the commercial stuff, right? 
I want six pack abs. I want huge thighs. I want to be able to deadlift 5,000 pounds. I'm like, Jesus, all right, we can make that happen, right? But that path is a very specific path. But then sometimes you can, you know, ask a simple question, well, what is wellness to you? And they might say, uh, you know what? I just want to be able to run with my kids again. You know, I, like, I just want to be able to get up and not feel like I'm in pain or that I'm out of breath or something along those lines. As you can see, two totally different scenarios. One is like, you know, wants to be Mr. Olympia. And then the other one just wants to be a family man. And this is true for not just men, but for women also. They get to choose the wellness that they are going to have for themselves. And then we get into the personal development aspect because personal development is very similar to how I was saying, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be just that regular business owner. What do you want for yourself? And this is a question that many people, they probably don't ask themselves enough, or if they do, they give themselves just kind of like a blanket statement. Well, you know, like I want a big house. I want like this car and then that's it. And then when they finally get it, happiness is not there. I wanted to get into a conversation of personal development and the journey for that end goal. Many people, they give themselves this end goal of what they are trying for, but yet they don't necessarily do the groundwork, the foundation, if you will, to say, is this what I truly want to build versus like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to put some stuff here and here and see what happens, right? People live haphazardlessly versus instead of purposefully. A conversation on that, take it over. That is so good. A ton to unpack there. You make a great point on getting started haphazardly. And people do that in business and people do that in health and fitness. And what is so easy for somebody to do is to start because they're excited. And like you said, to not think through the process of what it's going to take to actually achieve the thing they want to achieve and eventually burn themselves out because all they all that they've done is use their excitement energy to get them started and then to keep them going for that first initial period of time. In business, that's the person who's like working for somebody and they're like, oh, I could do this on my own. And then all the money's just going in my pocket. And so they quit their job and they go and start their own thing. Like a lawn care person or a construction person. Those, those are examples that come off the top of my head. They quit their construction job. They go start their own thing and they're all excited and they're going. And then all of a sudden, all these other things start to trickle in. Oh, I got to pay taxes. Oh, I have to pay taxes in all the cities that I actually do construction in. Oh, I might need an employee because it turns out that I'm not, that there were a bunch of people doing a bunch of things that I didn't realize they were doing. Oh, I need to file paperwork. Oh, I need to make sure that I get certain licenses. And all these things start to trickle in and you go, oh my gosh, what did I actually get myself into? And at that point, you're three months down the road and you got to make a choice or six months or a year and you got to make a choice. Where do, do I keep going or do I cut this off and do I stop? And that's that excitement just taking somebody over, right? And the dragging them down, dragging them down a hallway. In fitness, it's the same thing. I saw it. I've seen it over and over again. I'm ready to lose 50 pounds. I'm ready to get that six pack. I'm ready to do blah, 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 whatever the, usually it's a superficial thing. I'm ready to do it. Six weeks into it. Six weeks almost to the day for a lot of people, they quit because all that has motivated them is their excitement energy. It's not a purpose. It is their excitement energy. You cannot understand and appreciate what you're going to get yourself into unless you take the time to figure out the purpose of the thing that you're doing. Why are you actually doing it? Are you actually doing it because you think that you can do it better than your boss that's currently doing it? Or are you actually doing it because you want to own and operate and run and grow a business? And separating that excitement is super important because when people get started, it's almost always that excitement energy that gets them and grabs them and then throws them off course down the road. And that excitement energy is important because it may be telling you something good, but it's not helping you with your long-term success. It is that rational thinking. It is that purpose-driven thinking that what is this actually going to take and what do I actually want to get out of this thinking? Exactly what you said, health and fitness, going back to that. Nine times out of 10, the person that comes in and they know that I want to do this because I want to be able to move around with my grandkids and I want to be able to get up and down off the floor with my grandkids. They've thought it through and that person has a much higher likelihood to succeed than the person who comes in and they're like, I want to get a six pack 
or I want to lose 50 pounds. And both of those are great. That's fine. But you haven't, you have no real grounding reason for wanting to do it. So the second that adversity pops up and you hit a plateau or your schedule changes and you have to figure out how to change your workouts around or you're out to eat and something doesn't fit on your meal plan and you don't know how to make a decision, that's when you collapse because you don't have the right purpose. You don't have the right thing to guide you along the way. You haven't thought the process through and thought about all the things that it might actually have to take and the things that, you, that you're gonna have to overcome obstacles. There's definitely a... In the beginning, there's a time frame where you have to, or you let that excitement take you over and start controlling you. You have to control it and go, okay, I'm excited about this, which means that it's important. That's fine. You have to recognize that. But you also have to take a second to make a rational choice about what to do next. And that requires, like you said, sitting down and going, okay, and this is literally a pen and paper kind of thing. Pen and paper, sitting down, what are the things that it's going to take? What are my options to get started? And in three to five years, what does my life look like? Because most people also don't understand that these things are going to take, it's saying a three to five month thing. This is whether it's business, whether it's health and fitness. If you're not thinking in a year's time frame, not a month's time frame, then you're already getting knocked off course because these are years, years. I was in the fitness studio for 10 years, a decade. That's a long time. And many people would go, you put that much time into it and you're going to turn your back on it. Well, to go to your point, I looked 10 years in the future and I thought, I don't think that things are going to be much better 10 years in the future. I don't feel like I'm going to be able to fulfill this other purpose that I feel myself, that I feel growing in myself with this particular thing. So yeah, 10 years in the future, I don't see that. So I need to be able to make a choice now so that I can fulfill this different purpose that I see happening in the future. So you got to separate those irrational emotions in the moment and then sit down and just do the hard work and it's hard work but it's necessary work to go what does this thing actually look like yeah and then we get to the aspect of our past like if we have been a corporate person maybe we work for like a fortune 500 company maybe we are a yoga instructor we did that for 11 years we did all of these different things right some can easily say well why are you not a yoga instructor anymore or like why'd you leave you know your fortune 500 like seven figure job and it can just be as simple as you finally have grown to a next stage in your development and what we're talking about today is personal development because if you think about it when you're a teenager how you thought it's not the same way you think who you are today, right? When you're 20, hopefully not. So hopefully not. And we mature, we grow, and there's different stages of life. When you're going out, you're 21, you're partying, you're going to the club, you're dancing, you're having a good old time. But then now you have a kid, you have family. You're like, well, I'm not going to go to the club like like I used to. I'm going to focus on my family because I already had that moment. Are you going to look back and are you going to say? Well, you know, like I miss those days of me going out and clubbing and partying. Typically not because you're going to have a new joy, new purpose. And typically kids just bring that purpose so much more readily than going to the club and, you know, dancing and, and drinking or whatever, right? What I can say is we do have to figure out what our past is building us up to be. So we take what was our past, whether it be a trainer an executive, we use the skills and the wisdoms and all the knowledges that we have got, and we implement it into something new that we're trying to build. So if you're a coach, you implement what you have experienced into your own personal program. And that is what makes coaching so unique, because now you're going to get an individual that has a background, that has a story, that has a different mindset. And there's so many people in the world. And so there's always that idea that you have to find the person that you resonate with. And I mean, like we go back to like when we we're kids now, right? If you go to, you know, first grade, second grade, whatever, you didn't pick your teacher. Your teacher was kind of just assigned to you, right? Basically what happens is there's a, a roster of students that are, you know, given to the school and the school just has to say, okay, well, this person's going to go here. And it's basically, you know, like everyone gets divvied up. But the parent doesn't really have a say unless they fight for it. They can, but it's, it's very difficult, especially if you have very tough schools. And, and so it's, it's really random, like who you're going to get. But eventually later on in life, and this is where I want the conversation to go, because personal development is going to be that new form of education, because now you get to choose 
who your educator is, who your mentor is, who your person that you want to be helping and teach you. I would rather have coaches and mentors that have failed, that have tried different things along the way than someone who's, yeah, you know, like everything's been perfect in my life. I don't want a perfect coach. I want a coach that understands that life is hard because that is what life is. But life does not have to be impossible. And many people treat it as that, like it's impossible. I can't do this. I have these limits in my life. They will write down all the things they want to do. And you know what happens to that list? It gets lost. It gets piled under all the bills or whatever you have in your office or on your kitchen table, wherever you keep all your paperwork. And then maybe one day, right? New Year's resolution. You're like, oh, where's that list? Where's that list? You know, let me look at the list again. And what was accomplished? Maybe some, right? You know, like I'm going to give you some credit, but most of the things that you wanted to do have not. So we can give focus, as you said, excitement energy, but then we have to learn about accountability. And this is where the power of coaching comes in, because when you're trying to personally develop yourself, it is possible to do it, but it's a lot more difficult. It's almost like um, we have the attention spans of squirrels. And I'm not saying you're a squirrel, but we can be so easily distracted. And that's why when you have a system in place where like a coach, a mentor, you already know what path you're going to be going down. And that's to the best possible you. That version of you is going to be something that's going to happen, not only because you willed it, but because you are now going to be held accountable by your coach. And that is where education is going, actually, because we have our system, you know, school, we learn basic education. And when you're 18, 19 years old and you're done with school and high school, right? Guess what happens? These kids are not ready. They're not ready for the real world. They don't even know an inkling of what they want to do. But now they're faced with an opportunity to find a mentor, to find a path for themselves. And I believe this is where coaching is going to be coming in and taking over what education has failed to do and thus prepare them for the real world. What's your take on that? Well, they haven't been taught to think. They've been taught things. They've been taught stuff, right? But are you rarely taught to think for yourself? You're rarely taught to problem solve outside of how to do a math problem. You're not taught how to seek out knowledge and seek out different opportunities. You're not taught to overcome obstacles. Those are all skills. Problem solving is a skill. I was actually, it's funny, I was just talking about this with the guests that I had on my podcast. If you don't teach yourself to problem solve and overcome adversity, you lose the ability to do it and you will eat more easily give up. But the thing is, your identity is built during adverse times. So when you are confronted with an adverse time and you've never been taught how to problem solve and how to overcome things and you quit because of that, your identity is built on top of that quitting, is built on top of that not following through. And eventually you just become the kind of person who doesn't follow through with the things that you try and the things that you do and the ideas that you have. The same thing that goes with health and fitness. And health and fitness, when you quit so many times because you don't want to take the time to problem solve is all it is whenever you come up with a plateau You become the person who can't achieve your health and fitness goals. That's what you tell yourself. You become that kind of person. And that's an issue if you want to actually achieve anything in life. That's why having a coach is such an important thing is because we all have blind spots. We all all have blind spots. Whether you want to believe it or not, every single person has blind spots because you are you. You are only you. You are only one person. And you only look forward. You can't see everything that you're missing about yourself. You can't see, for instance, you can't see that the reason that you don't like this thing in this person, this demeanor about them, or the way that they bite their nails, or the way that they interact with other people, the reason that you don't like that is because you're the same way. And you don't like that about yourself. You can't see that. But a coach can point that out to you. A coach can tell you, hey, The reason that you have a hard time with that is because that's the way you are. We all have blind spots and we all need to, if you want to progress in life in an effective, efficient way, you have to be able to knock those blind spots off. 
you have to be able to get those things out of the way. Because what you'll hear in business, any quality business coach or any quality business book, somewhere in the book will say, the number one roadblock in a business is the business, business owner. And that's because the owner has blind spots. And they not only have blind spots about themselves, but they have blind spots about the business. They can't think fully about the business because they're so caught up in the context of it. They're so caught up in the, whirl the whirlwind of it. They're not able to see the things that are out there that someone, an advisor who would come in could just go, yeah, well, it's very obvious. It's these two or three things that you could fix, that you could change. And a human being is the same way. A human being is basically a business in human form. And a coach comes in and they go, well, yeah, you're getting in your, in your way here, here, and here. This is how you're getting in your own way. But you didn't realize that because, like I said, all you're doing is focusing forward. All you're doing is looking forward. You're not able to see those holes that are poked in you. Partly because we don't like to think poorly of ourselves, but partly because we just have so much going on, like you're not going to pay attention to your blind spots. They're blind for a reason. I think that's a big reason why people struggle later in life is they've developed blind spots and they're not willing to look at them. They're not willing to confront them. And a coach is a, the, one of the simplest ways to be able to do that. With a coach, you just they find those blind spots much quicker than you think, not only because they have their own experience to work with, but assume, assumedly, they've worked with a bunch of other people and they've had a bunch of other people's experiences to work with as well. At any rate, blind spots are one of the things that you just have to be able to recognize if you want to be able to live and move, uh, grow yourself in an effective way. And even, as you said, everyone has blind spots. And I remember I was talking to one of my coaches. He's, a, he's just a life coach. But he was like, you're bottlenecking a lot of things. And I'm like, what things? And he's like, oh, this and that and that. And I was like, Jesus, you're right. So I was <laughs> so immediately I started to come up with a plan to get rid of all of that bottlenecking I was doing because I was wasting time. I was stopping myself from doing the things that I truly wanted to do because I was over here micromanaging everything. And I was just like, okay, this is something that you have to check in very frequently. It's not something like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm going to go to my doctor once a year. A coach is someone who's going to be helping you for the months whenever you're working with them. And you're going to notice every single month, you progressively get better. You get stronger. You get more wise. And then you start to see the world like a different way. It's, it's more vivid almost. It's like if you do something, you're like, wait, wait, I know better. Because now you're starting to look at your thoughts. And sometimes if we can, you know, people would throw their thoughts in a corner and let them be rancid. And eventually, when they have to deal with it, that's when they will. And people wait for the trauma to hit them. Like I'm sure you're well aware of how many people come to you when they're down, like they're going through divorce, they got bad doctor's note, and they're coming to you for help. How can we start to get people more in the mindset of taking action today rather than waiting for something to go wrong? You know, I wish it were as simple as like just helping people understand the shortness of life. There is a saying that I love so much. Unless you make the unconscious conscious, it will dictate your life and you will call it fate. But consciousness is, I like to think of it as an onion. And the surface layer is where a lot of people are. They just kind of are. And every once in a while, they notice a little blip and they're like, that's weird. That feels off. And then another blip happens and they're like, that's weird. That feels off. And then they just kind of go through life and scroll on their phone and so on and so forth. And then eventually you decide to check out that blip and you're like, oh, I wonder what that was. Like, what's that all about? And so you kind of go down a rabbit hole and do some digging and do some thinking and you peel back one layer and you're like, oh, there's a different world. There's a different world here. There's something else to look at. And then you go through life again and then the same thing happens. You start seeing blips again and then you peel back another layer. It's a matter of just starting. And that seems simple. There's a couple of ways that I like to think about it. Gary V, which if if, you, if you're listening and you don't know who Gary Vee is, he's one of the most popular social media people and entrepreneurs in the world. You can go find him very easily. Yesterday, I happened to come across one of his videos. He said, we're not born long and we're dead forever. And in those two phrases alone, you can start to understand why it is so important to not wait. Because the longer you wait, literally, the longer behind you there is and the less in front of you there is. 
And the less in front of you there is, the less work you're able to put in to become the person that you want to do. It's not that you can never do it. I fully believe at the studio, our average member was between the age of 45 and 60. And the absolute life-changing stuff that those people went through whenever they came in and worked hard was phenomenal. So you can do it at, a, at many different stages in your life than most people believe. But the more you put it off, the more you become the kind of person who puts it off. And that's the hard part not understanding the identity hit that you're going through, that every time you go, I'll start tomorrow, you become the kind of person who puts it off till tomorrow. You become the kind of person who doesn't follow through until tomorrow. And then at that point, you're becoming the kind of person who doesn't follow through with your own word. And that you are the most important person to impress. And when you stop impressing your own self, that's when it just becomes that, surface layer of the onion and you're not even noticing blips anymore you're just on the surface layer and just bumping around in life you just got to be able to like i said i wish it was as simple as understanding the shortness and brevity of life i wish it was that simple but most people don't understand a rational argument if you can understand that there will be a time there will be a time where you hit rock bottom and you will have to make a choice and if you choose today instead of waiting till then then you may not hit that rock bottom. That maybe that'll get you going forward. Yeah, I like the idea of if you hit rock bottom, you have to make a choice. If you think about it today, you can create the consciousness to make change in your life. And for the majority of people, they wait for that rock bottom moment and then they wake up, right? It's like that knock in the head. But today is an opportunity for you not to you know, fall hard and to better your life, right? Personal development is about making you a better version of yourself. Our conversation today was the introduction for you to step into that mindset and into that lifestyle. Because if you are just going to always wait for tomorrow, wait for the right moment, you're going to find that you're waiting until you're 65 years old and you can't do the things that you thought you could do. Because with age and with, the, with a lack of care on the body and the mind, you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do later in life. Today is going to be an opportunity for you to do that. As we begin to wrap up, Jerry, I would love to get some final words from you and then for you to tell the audience where they can find you. You are worthy and you are capable. One thing that I believe is most people don't believe in their, their self-worth is so low right now that they don't believe that they're worthy of improving and worthy of becoming better, becoming something different. And because of that, when they try and they fail and they try and they fail, then they believe they're not capable of doing it. Understand that you are worthy and you are capable of doing it. But the way that happens is by doing one thing today and then doing one thing tomorrow and then doing one thing the next day and then doing one thing the day after that and continuing that forever, slowly adding things, slowly adjusting, but doing one thing at a time ignoring the flying squirrels going by, like you mentioned before, you got to ignore the squirrels, you got to ignore all the instant gratification. And you have to recognize that excellence is found in the mundanity of the things that we do. It's not found in some secret. It's not found in some whatever hack. It's found in the mundanity. And if you can recognize that and start to believe in yourself over time, you will become the kind of person who can achieve the things that you want to achieve. But you got to take those small steps. You got to start one step today. And then tomorrow when it shows up, you do one step tomorrow. And you literally do that one day at a time. And that will build your self-worth back up. And that will build your self-confidence back up. And how can people find you? Best place to find me right now is on Instagram at Jerry Scarlato, S-C-A-R-L-A-T-O. Perfect. And I'll make it easy for everyone. The link will be in the description box below. Reach out to Jerry, learn more about what he's doing. Check out his podcast. The link will also be in the description box below. I encourage everyone to listen in, tune in, follow, support. Because when we're getting into the mindset of personal development, trying to change ourselves, the more the merrier, I always say. Because you start to develop a mindset that's going to be unique to you. When you go to college, the reason I like college, not because they charge you a lot of money, but because there's so many options for you to choose, there's so many paths. But today we have an easy, like 
But today we have an even easier path. We can go down this podcast, this personal development book, and from there we can start to form our mind into exactly the mindset we need in order to get to the life that we want. So I want to thank you so much, Jerry, for coming on, spending some time and talking about your work. All right, everyone, I'd like to thank you so much for watching that interview with Jerry and myself. What went on is we talked about his work, but then we also had some great tidbits in there to help people along the way to take action today. When you think about it, you know, like you don't have to take action, right? Like you can wait for rock bottom. And most people, like I said in the interview, they do. You don't have to be one of those individuals. You can choose to not be one of those people that are going to take action later. We have to get into the mindset of urgency almost, but not urgency in the sense of panic, urgency in the sense of fulfillment. Because if you can do more in your day, in your life, right? We all have 24 hours in our day. What separates the people who do amazing things? And like, I mean, like, look at Elon Musk. He's going, he wants to go to Mars. He wants to have this company and that company. This is a man who wants to do things versus you might have someone who is just, you know, kind of moving through life. Yeah, you know, I have a few franchises and nothing big like intergalactic space travel. Like you get to choose what you spend your time on. You can spend your time on your phone. You can spend your time on the internet, watching movies and things along those lines. Does it bring about fulfillment? And one of the things I recall on my journey of personal development was how much time I was wasting and I didn't necessarily know. You can find your blind spots to a degree, but you cannot find them all when it comes to changing yourself and personal development because we will see what we want to see. Eventually, it just becomes a habit. For example, a habit that you might be able to pick up on is like when you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you do? You might say, I hit the snooze button, or I get up and I go to the bathroom. I might say, well, let's look at Monday. Exactly what did you do? You woke up, your alarm clock rang, you hit the snooze button, did you grab your phone? Did you pick it up? Did you see a text message? Did you see a missed call? Did you see a voicemail that you have to get back to? Did you go on social media? What was going on when you looked at your phone? Well, now let's go a little bit deeper. Let's look at, oh, well, I'm going to be late for work. Okay, well, are you excited to go to work? Are you ready to go to work? Did you prepare last night? Are you going to be late? All of these questions are there, yet we are just going to easily get, yeah, I woke up, I hit the snooze button, or I got out of bed and I went to the bathroom, got ready for work, and I went to work. What do you do on your way to work? Did you listen to personal development material? Did you listen to a podcast? Did you listen to an ebook, a book, or whatever? You're not going to read a book. You're going to listen to a book when you're driving, hopefully, unless you are just a passenger. So if you're on a subway or something along those lines, you can definitely read a book. All of these different conversations that you can have are just options that you could have lived. And some people, they choose the lesser version of themselves. They choose that old version of themselves. They go back and they revert to that person that is not going to bring about goodness in their life. So if we know that there's not going to necessarily be goodness at the other end of my Netflix special, why do we do it? For entertainment? For joy? For what, happiness? Sometimes we might get a feeling of delight because we watch something. And those things are going to be truly meaningful for us. And you might give yourself a saying, well, how do I know unless I watch it? Well, ask yourself your track record of watching things on Netflix and how you felt after it. You might feel really happy with a series and this makes you a better person, but is it enhancing you as a better person? Because you can feel really good because of something, right? Someone made you laugh and made you feel good. Is that just a band-aid? And so we have to look at what personal development is for you right now, because you might say personal development is watching The Office, but guess what? That personal development might be a Band-Aid. We need to do the surgery. We need to get deep. We need to figure out what is truly stopping us from greatness. Some people are going to go down that path, and some people are just going to stay where they are. 
And I encourage everyone, you know, if you're listening to this, to share this episode with somebody so they can learn that there are options for them. They don't have to stay where they are. They don't have to continue to take the beatings. They don't have to continue to accept the scraps that are thrown at them in life. They don't have to have a scarcity mindset any longer. They can choose abundance. They can choose fulfillment. They can choose purpose. But it all begins with asking yourself, can I do this? And the answer, of course, is yes. Will you do it? That right there is a little bit more iffy. And I always say, skin in the game is going to be the best method for the majority of people if they want to change their life. If I want to change something in my life, I have skin in the game. That means I'm going to pay with time or money, right? Whichever one is greater for me. I'm going to say, well, I'm going to invest this much time in this because this is my skin in the game. I might say, I'm going to invest this much money because this is my skin in the game. We don't have a problem with skin in the game to do the things that we were told to do, like go to college and then you finally get a piece of paper and the piece of paper doesn't necessarily make you happier or you probably don't even want to do that career anymore. So what do we do? We have to figure out what do we truly want. And the best way to do that is invest in yourself. Coaching is not expensive. It is going to be an investment. So a lot of people, they say, oh, you know, like I can't afford this. Oh, this is just too much for me right now. Well, guess what? You can stay down this path and you can continually deteriorate until you are nothing left. Or you can say, right now, I am still something substantial. Let me figure out what I need to do to elevate myself. Let me figure out what I need to do to build myself up. And then from there, we get to start to live life again. From there, we get to start to do the things that we always wanted to do versus the things that we were afraid to do. Hold yourself accountable. But then make sure that you can have people that are going to hold you accountable too. A coach is going to be an effective resource for you on that journey. As always, I encourage you to reach out to my guest. You can always reach out to us here at Reverend Concepts to learn more about how you can change your mindset, personal development, and so much more. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, email me coachingincession at gmail.com. And I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching in Session. Until then, everyone take care.